Hello everyone, this is Rick with Cybermedics and we're here today to talk about the YubiKey. In particular, the applications that make the YubiKey useful. But before we do that, if you're not familiar with YubiKeys or hardware security keys and wondering whether you really need one, I recommend you click on our previous video above which explains adding additional protection to your accounts through a security key. So once you've decided you need a key, you need to know where to buy a key. These little conversation icons will pop up throughout the video to help you know what we are focused on discussing. So we click on the store icon and these are the keys available from Yubico. You can also go to one of your online retailers, in this case Amazon, search for Yubico security key, scroll down and see the prices on the keys. If you compare that to the Yubico store, they're pretty much the same. So go with the vendor that's going to provide you the most friendly return policies typically here in the US and that is Amazon. So once you've decided where to buy a key, you need to know to buy what key. And they have three basic types. This is from the Yubico comparison matrix on their site. You have a Yubico blue security key, a YubiKey 5 series, and a YubiKey bio series. So to determine which key to buy, you need to look at the physical ports of the devices that you're going to plug it into. Are you going to need USB-A? Do you need USB-C? So they all support A and only two of them support C. Do you need the lightning port? If that's the case, then you're going to have to go with the YubiKey 5 series. Next thing to consider would be whether you want to communicate wirelessly with your key to your device or physically plug it in. And if you want to go wirelessly through the near field communication, then you're going to have to use a YubiKey Series 5 key. Now let's go on to security functions. They all support universal second factor, which is you plug in the key, you physically touch it, and you authenticate the authentication app generates one-time, time-based one-time passcodes and if you want to store those on a YubiCo uh, through the YubiCo Authenticator app on a, a YubiKey, you'll have to go with the YubiKey Series 5. Now the advantage of storing your TOTP codes on the YubiKey is that whatever device you plug it into that's running the Authenticator Yubico Authenticator app, you'll have your codes with you. The disadvantage is you have to physically plug in the key in order to get your codes. So you can't just call up an app without the key being plugged in. Alright, my recommendation since I have mostly Windows and Android devices is I use a USB-C with a USB-C to A adapter. I keep that on my key ring and that key can be plugged into any of my devices for authentication. Alright, once you've selected the key that you need and you've purchased it, then you're going to download a couple applications to, to make it useful. First one we're going to do, go to your app store and search for Yubico and find the Yubico Authenticator. And once you've found the Yubico Authenticator, we can minimize this and you can go to yubico.com and you can search for the YubiKey Manager. So that's the two apps you need, YubiKey Manager and YubiKey Authenticator. So search for that, click on it, scroll down here, and pick the one that's right for your operating system, install it. And once you've installed those two apps, come down and right click, right click on this, and right click again, and say run as administrator. So you need to run these apps as an administrator and that's what they'll both look like. So you have the Authenticator app for the time-based one-time passcodes and Yubico for configuring all the FIDO2 and security functions of the key itself. So we're primarily going to focus on the YubiKey key manager uh, on this video since it's much more complex in all the different settings. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to talk about application usage. We're going to go into the application section on the key you can see when you plug in your key, it acknowledges the key with a serial number and firmware. So we're going to go Applications, OTP, and you have two slots. This is for the FIDO2, when you just touch it for hardware key certification, authentication. 
and the long touch which is two seconds or longer is also can be programmed so we're going to configure static password next now static password can be added to your online account authentication in other words you could have an easy password you could have this very complex static password and then you could type in a couple more characters at the end to have very unique passwords for everything you've had by generating this static password. So we're going to type allow any character. You could hit the generate here or you could type in a really long passphrase that maybe you could also remember in case you didn't have the key with you. So once you've generated that static password click finish and we'll say yes overwrite slot 2. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to call up and show you how this, this works. And when you do a long press, two seconds or longer, it's going to say really long passphrase, whatever you had programmed into it. Now I want to show you what it looks like on the configuration because you won't see that in here, but we'll do a long press again and you'll see that passphrase has been stored. And that's how you would use it. So, all right. Now we'll go into applications both HOTP. So OTP, configure slot 2, OTH HOTP. So OTH is nothing more than the initiative for open authentication, an organization that is trying to make online authentication more secure and easier for individuals. HOTP stands for hash based one time password. A hash is a mathematical formula that they take and they hash against something else to create that one-time passcode. They are event counter based. That means there's a counter on the server and there's a counter on the key that they keep in sync. And HOTP is valid until used. Contrasting that with time-based one-time passcodes, they're event time based. So they're based on a, a time universal sync time. And it is invalid until the time expires. So HOTPs are more robust if there's going to be a time delay from the time that the code is generated till the time it's put in. All right, so how do you configure that? You need a secret key. That could be provided to you by your service provider or you could generate it yourself. It can be six or eight digits. We're going to show you how to generate it yourself through the Windows operating system. Come down here, run PowerShell as an administrator. These commands have been put into the description so you can copy them from there and run them yourself if you like. And you just put them in here. That's the cryptographic function. This is the one that randomizes the function. The dollar $R returns the, the variable. In this case, here's the cryptographic key. If you type in the dollar $R value again, you'll see you generate the same key. If you want to re-randomize the key, put in the for statement up here and put in the dollar $R variable return and there you see you have a unique key as compared to the other one. Anyway, we're going to copy that key. We're going to paste it here and we're going to say finish. And we're going to say overwrite the slot and now that credential has been configured. We're going to paste it into a file. Now I recommend you print it on a piece of paper, put it in a safe, or put it in a secure cryptographic file because you're not going to get that key again once it is put into the key. It's not going to be accessible. All right. So when you long press two seconds or more, what's going to happen is you're going to return an eight digit code in this case. And it's just like TOTP, you would use that code to authenticate to your particular service provider. All right couple articles here explaining HOTP versus TOTP and how it works. They're also linked in the description if you want to get more information. Now on to the application challenge response. Here we go challenge response. Next. And what is that? Challenge response. You enter a password for an account. The service provider of the account challenges you. And in this case they use that password to challenge the YubiKey. The YubiKey and the secret are hashed together. That is returned to the service provider and that's what unlocks your account. Been used with KeePass, which is a, a password manager application that uses the challenge response 
account to be able to authenticate to the database for your passwords. So the secret key, you can generate your secret key here, you can copy it and paste it. Again, once you save it, you're not going to get it back. Finish and you say yes. Now it's been configured. The challenge response has been configured. When you long press the key in this case, it, you're going to get a cryptographic response, which is basically the password and this secret key hashed together. That's the response that gets sent back to the service provider. Here are a couple websites for getting additional information with using YubiKey with KeyPass. As I mentioned earlier, that's a typical use case for this password manager. It uses the challenge response capabilities of the YubiKey. They are linked in the description. All right, now we're going to go on to slot one. Remember earlier in the video I discussed slot one is typically for FIDO2 applications, short touch to authenticate. We're going to go in and break this and then show you how to reconfigure it. So I'm also calling up the authenticator app because I want you to see what effect or no effect that it has on your time-based one-time passcodes in the authenticator app. We're going to click delete and then we're going to say yes. Now you can see now the slot is empty. We're going to remove the key. We're going to reinsert the key and you see this key has been acknowledged and over here on Authenticator, it says no accounts. Well, if you pull the key out again and put the key back in again, you can see the accounts came back. That's because it just needed to reinitialize. It has no effect. Deleting the OTP over here has no effect on your Authenticator application accounts. Let's go through here the application OTP. Now you can see this slot is empty. Okay. Now let's see what effect it had on the previously credentialed accounts with this slot one. So go into Yahoo and when I authenticated with that key where the OTP on slot one had been removed, it asked me for the pin. Well, I hadn't changed the pin, so I put in the pin and I said okay. And it said touch your key, touch the key and it logs into the account which I thought was a little strange because I would have thought deleting the OTP in slot one which is what you have to touch in order to authenticate to the account it would break it but it didn't break it on Yahoo so slot one is empty now let's talk about how to reconfigure it so you go configure and we're in slot one OTP next you can say use the serial number and then you say generate a private ID and you generate a secret key. And I've just masked these out for security purposes and then you click upload and then you click finish and it failed and the reason it failed is because I had already used this key previously with the serial number so what you have to do is you have to come in here and this is from YubiKey and see that it says the upload failed because it had already previously been used and it tells you the details on what can be in that box for it to be uploaded to their cloud service so we go in here and I just change the last character of this instead of saying use serial upload finish and it says do you want to override it you say yes and then it's going to take you to this website for uploading the key. You say, I'm not a robot. You click upload and it's going to say invalid because I did not short press the key to generate an OTP. Once you short press to generate an OTP, now you can click upload and it will upload the key and show you whether it was successful. If you want to try it out, you just click try it out, short press the key and it comes back and it says the OTP key is valid. Let's go back into the app and show you the slot is configured. So we reconfigured the OTP. Now we're going to go into FIDO2 under the applications and we're going to say change the PIN just to show you what the process is. Normally when you authenticate to a site if it's asking for a PIN this is the FIDO2 PIN that it's asking for. So we're going to change the pin just to show you the process. We're going to do this incorrectly. 
fat finger it a couple times. And you can see now that we have six tries left on this. So every time you try it and you fail, it's going to have a counter. Okay, so we're going to change the pin one more time. We're going to fat finger it again. And on the third try, it's going to tell you the pin was blocked. So now that 502 pin is blocked. You have to pull the key out, put it back in. Now we can change the pin again. And now you see we have eight tries left. Next, we're going to reset FIDO. Now, supposedly, if you reset FIDO, when you do that, it's going to tell you it's going to delete all of your credentials. Okay, so once you do that, you shouldn't be able to use it to log into any of the things that you set up previously with the FIDO key. So we'll say yes, re remove the key, reinsert the key, and then it's telling you to touch the key. And now you can see all FIDO applications have been reset. Let's go see what effect it had on previously authenticated applications with this key. So for the Bitwarden, type in the password, log in, touch the key, and again, another bizarro. I, I don't understand why it would allow me to authenticate with that key when the FIDO application had been completely reset. But it did. So this is the one Yahoo where when we deleted the OTP, it still allowed us to authenticate with the key. So let's see what effect this has on Yahoo. So type in the password, next. It says it's a problem. It won't allow you to use the key. So in this case, Yahoo said no. Don't recognize the key. All right, let's go into Google and try to authenticate here. Type in your password, and we're using Control Shift L with the Bitwarden extension. Highly recommend Bitwarden for Password Manager. You can click to see our previous videos. Click Next, and this key is a problem. So everyone is implementing this a little bit differently. And if we go back into Yahoo, when you first create an account with them, they're going to require you to set a pin if a pin is not set. If you decide you want to use Google and there's no pin set, it's not going to require a pin. FIDO2 input requests are not consistent. So on Yahoo, it'll require a user ID, a password, a pin, and touching the key. Okay. On Bitwarden, it requires a user ID, a password, no pin, and touching the key. On Microsoft Outlook, once you remove the password and add the key, it's going to require a user ID, a pin, and a touch. So everybody is implementing this differently. The reason pins appear, they don't appear, it's controlled by the service provider. All right, so that covers all of the major applications here, OTP, Challenge Response, Static Password, and Oath HOTP. Now we're going to just briefly dive into the PIV. Normally you won't be using this, but I just wanted to show you that's where some of this information or confusion arise about pins because there's also a credential management function in here that has a pin. And you can configure the pins, you can change the pin. And if you fat finger that three times, the pin becomes blocked. Now, you can unblock the pin if you know the pin unlock key, which by default is this, but if you didn't know it, you wouldn't be able to do this. And then you can reset the pin. And then you have three tries left now because that's the baseline for this pin. But normally, most people are not going to be using this. You'll be in the application section for the slot one and slot two. You won't be in this PIV section. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. Hope you will consider subscribing and have a great and wonderful hack-free day.